Well, that only took a couple minutes, actually, I have to say. I probably waited maybe five minutes for one of the charging areas to open up, and then it looks like another car is about to take off, too, so the guy behind me is going to be able to get in. So um, I'll walk you through this charging experience. I'm going to flip the angle of the camera around, and you can kind of see how it works. I hope I figure it out, because I've never charged a car before. <laughs> can't be that hard. I imagine you just open the little charge port door, stick the thing in, and then I guess maybe I'll be told about how long it takes to do on the information panel? I don't know. Here we go. First time charging. So here's my car and there's the charge part. Open set up. Just like that. Uh, I guess I'm gonna grab this little guy right here. And it's a little heavier than I would have expected. I'm gonna stick this into here. Back in the car now, and looking at the dash, it appears that it shows me that it is supercharging. You can see that at the top. And then time remaining says 30 minutes. I'm currently at 40%. It shows um, visually about what percentage of the battery pack is charged. And it also appears that it's gonna take me up to, I think that 80% mark, as far as I've read, um, unless you absolutely need to go on some trip that you need to charge the battery up to 100%. As far as I understand, Tesla prefers that you um, keep the charging down to 80% to maintain the lifespan, I guess, and quality of the battery cells. Um, so there's that. It looks like we're at 66 kilowatt, kilowatts. Is this kilowatt hours? I'm never sure about that. It uh, looks like it's charging at the speed of 267 miles per hour. Not sure what the plus three kilowatt hour business represents. Um, I'll have to look into, like, I don't know, in the comments below, feel free to educate me. The 66 kilowatts, is that, that that's how much is in the battery? Um, or is that the rate at which it's charging? I don't know. Set limit, not sure what to do with that. Not sure why I would play with that. I'll have to look that up. Charge current says 48A. I'm sure that's all very fascinating. And then scheduled departure, I don't know. Current session, $1.20. Not sure how that affects me. As far as I understand, when you buy the Tesla, you get a free um, 1,000 miles while charging. So presumably um, that number doesn't mean much. So I'm gonna have to figure that out because, uh, I mean, a thousand miles, do they cost that out? Uh, is it just a straight thousand miles, presumably? I mean, if I get a hundred miles out of this charge, I guess I'd have 900 miles left. Do I see it in my app? I'll have to take a look at the app. Um, then once I'm done with my complimentary thousand miles, uh, do I go the app, through the app? Does it bill me? I don't remember setting up a credit card except when I paid and that was through some third party online thing. So. I imagine I would set up some credit card account. Um, I imagine I will also look for like, what is it, evgo.com, some of these other websites that have other um, charge services available other than just supercharging. Uh, feel free to put your ideas down in the comments below because I really don't know. Um, but you know, necessity is the mother of all invention or the mother of all action really. Um, as I need electricity, I'm gonna find out. My hope, you know, this car is rated for something like 314 miles on a charge. I don't think that's really going to happen. Um, I'd be happy if I got 220 miles out of it, to be honest. That's kind of my base expectation. Um, we'll see with this whole 20% missing off the top of the battery to maintain it. Um, you know, that's going to take some mileage off, but hopefully 220 miles would be great. If I got above that, it would be nice. Um, as I'm doing my long distance traveling, uh, it becomes more important as I'm driving across the country. Um, I'll have to stop much more frequently and hopefully the chargers won't be all um, taken up. You know, as far as I understand, people are just flying less and driving more. So I would not be surprised that um, these Tesla supercharger stations are gonna be pretty packed um, everywhere I go. I mean, this place, it's city, it's San Francisco, maybe, you know, there's what? seven, one, two, three, four, five, six chargers here. And then there are four um, 
uh, disabled parking spots just across the way that don't look like superchargers. They almost look like the Tesla uh, 220 conversion thing um, across the way. But I'm going to assume more people are driving. I'm going to assume more people are charging and I'm going to assume it's going to be somewhat inconvenient for me to be going electric um, with so many other people going electric at the same time. Um, the world's going to have to figure that piece out because if we're going to switch over to cleaner cars, clearly the majority of the population of this planet are not going to just like wait in line for charging for like ever, you know, ever and ever. That's, that's not going to happen. Uh, at home charging would be great. It's just not an option for me. Oh, look, there are two more Teslas in line across the way. Where is there a third over there? Um, looks like I've got 25 minutes. So it is charging at a pretty snappy pace which is nice. Uh, I guess I'm up 6% already, 25 minutes to go. Um, it seems reasonable enough. I mean, if I had to go out and get a coffee or something, it's just a foggy, cold day and I'm in the Presidio, so where I'm gonna go, so I'm just gonna hang out here. Um, supercharging, not shabby, quiet, efficient. Um, the lady next to me looks like she's reading some research papers. So certainly this time could be used for um, efficient endeavors. So I have a feeling that if I have any sense that I'm going to charge on a given day, that I'm going to bring my work laptop with me, uh, or my little iPad Pro, uh, and try to use these charging moments um, very efficiently. Or maybe I'll bring a book or something. Like, I don't think waiting is all that bad. Like, I used to do a lot of commuting on buses up until this whole COVID craziness came out. And I use that time um, to work, to sleep, to chat, to watch uh, movies, to read. Like I used it very productively. Um, in some way, this is not so bad. It would be better if charging were a lot faster, obviously, and a lot more common. But um, I don't know, we can figure it out, right? Like this is part of being an early adopter or a middle adopter or whatever I am. Um, just gonna have to get used to it, all right. Chat in a minute. Fourteen minutes to go. Maybe I should take a nap. Some guy just came in the wrong direction. Is he gonna use? I'm gonna get rid of his license plate. Is he going to use the handicap spot without being handicapped? He better have a handicap placard or else. That's like super douchey. Oh wait, he doesn't have a license plate on front. Now the question is, why are there four handicap spots? when there's clearly no need for four. He's totally doing it. I don't see any handicapped sign on his car. Although I would say realistically, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have four unused charge ports that are handicapped, um, accessible, and have no one in them, and then suddenly expect no one to use them. So I think a little bit of flexibility here is acceptable, but still, it's a little brazen. Why didn't he go in the spot behind me? It's a supercharger. That thing in front of me only looks like 220. Hmm, very interesting. So clearly there's some intrigue going on at this Presidio supercharger uh, area. I've got 12 minutes left. I feel like the person who kind of like, all they do is sit in their window all day long and kind of look to see what other people are doing instead of minding <laughs> their own business. Uh, what can I say? I'm new to this whole Tesla lifestyle. I find it all very titillating. Um, who knows? Maybe the guy has a hidden disability. What do I know? Although you'd think he'd have the placard in his window. Um, anyways, a little bit of fun things to observe. Uh, the lady next to me is still reading through endless stacks of paper. She's being super efficient with her time. Um, I have to say my first charging experience has not been very productive. Um, I'm being a little bit of a snoop today, just seeing what's going on, who's driving around, who are these people, 
What do they look like? What are their backgrounds? Why did they buy Tesla? Why are they interested in driving electric cars? Are we all a bunch of douches? Or are we normal people? Um, no doubt Tesla owners are like anybody else in the world. You have a spectrum of people from lovely and pleasant to less lovely and less pleasant. Um, but everyone, you know, everyone's just minding their own business. It looks like, again, half the cars are occupied, the other half are not. And uh, this other guy, I still will not understand why he chose to go with that other charger. Is there something better about that one? Um, all right, I've got 10 minutes to go. Maybe I'll take a little power nap. Cell signal down here sucks. There's no um, cellular connection under all this concrete and this parking structure. Hope we don't have an earthquake. I know what I can talk about while I wait for my car to charge. Kind of reclined down here. It's quite comfy. Um, so I got Tesla busted today. Uh, my friend and I, uh, we were driving through Oakland. Um, we went and visited some of our family um, in the Oakland Hills. And then we decided to drive over the Richmond Bridge back towards Marin County. Um, to grab some dinner and last night or yesterday I wasn't able to use the auto steer because I guess I didn't put in my name or something in the account there was some error it was giving me so last night before you know when I parked the car before I went to bed I made sure my account was set up so today I could use auto steer which um my friend got in the car and she was super excited and um she was funny she just bought a little uh Fiat Cinquecento and uh she was like Daniel why did you do this to me? Why did you make me want to buy a Tesla all of a sudden? So she was loving the car. She thought the seats were amazing. She thought it was beautiful. She loved the minimal minimalistic design. And um, so that was fun. But I was like, hey, this car can also steer itself. And yesterday I did the auto braking and auto gas, I guess, for adaptive cruise control. And today I wanted to try the auto steer. So we're going down the freeway. And I was like, watch this. You and I can share auto steer together. Now, I wish I had captured it on camera. But the reality is... I'm driving and I'm trying to not like drive and die uh, and trying to be somewhat legal with these videos that I'm making. So we get in and I double click down on the stock on the right side of the um, steering wheel and it engages this auto steer thing, which auto gases or auto brakes. It's kind of like adaptive cruise control, but it also lane keeps so it will like drive you up and down the highway. Now, apparently the steering wheels, I think I had read something to this effect, the steering wheel has some sort of capacitive touch or it knows if your hands are on it or not. It's like, it's kind of like a, a phone screen, I guess. There's something in the steering wheel. And um, so I'm driving down the road and I was like, watch, the thing's driving itself. And I took my hands off and then I put it back on. That was all fine. Then we're going on this interchange where like we're in the far right lane and it's driving itself. And then this lane's gonna end and I can see these arrows coming up where I'm like, watch this, it's gonna end. And the the car in this um, autopilot mode doesn't change lanes. So the cars are coming along the left and in front of me, I can see that my lane, my lane's gonna end. And I take my hand off the wheel and I'm just waiting to see what it does. Well, then all of a sudden I get this like red flashing light on the display and I, it like made some bong and it told me to take the wheel and I guess it disengaged or something, which I did. So I thought, okay, smart, it disengaged. I was expecting that. And then I took over and sort of went left. Then right after that, I try re-engaging auto steer and I get this little nasty gram Auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive. Tesla busted. You got me, Tesla. I took my hands off the wheel. Um, so I felt like I was kind of Tesla grounded, actually. because I had just started my drive out to Sausalito, and I was feeling kind of poopy, like a kid who was supposed to do some chore around the house and then didn't do it. And then mom and dad come in, and you're grounded, buddy. I felt kind of bad little sad and a touch resentful at the same time. Um, 
But then again, I guess in the state of California and probably everywhere on earth, you're supposed to like drive with your hands on the steering wheel, even if you have this autopilot function engaged or auto steering. So fair enough. I deserved it. No one likes to get sent to the doghouse, uh, even if they earned it. So I got Tesla busted on day two. Uh, so don't be me. Don't take your hands off the wheels. I guess you're supposed to have them 10 and two, or I don't know. What, what is it, seven and five? What's the alternative? I mean, let's be honest. I often drive cars with my knees. So it's not like, I don't know. I'll just confess that. I know a lot of you guys do that too. Um, so apparently I can't Tesla drive with my knees or I'm going to get Tesla busted or Tesla grounded. So be aware of that. Do not think that these cars just drive themselves and you can just take your hands off and not pay attention. You actually got to pay attention and the steering wheel knows the great steering wheel in the sky knows what you're doing. Don't try to fool it or you'll get busted too. All right, swiveling my seat up because apparently I've only got two minutes to go. And uh, as soon as it gets down to zero, I'm gonna put the car in drive and see what happens. I will tell you once in the last 30 years, I actually drove away from a gas pump with the pump still in it. It was a total accident. It was, I don't know how it happened because nothing like that had ever happened before, but I did it, I'll confess. And uh, I'm gonna be interested to see if it even lets me put the car in park while I'm charging. 1% to go. The message on the left side of the screen says, high usage supercharger station charging limit set to 80%, adjust if needed. I almost feel like adjusting it. There's no one in line here, but. I'm gonna read through the owner's manual or whatever's online to see, should I ever charge above 80% or just kind of leave it at that? It's not gonna kill me, but it just means I'm gonna to have to charge that much more frequently. Got less than one minute to go. I'm at 79%. It's 714 PM. The temperature is a lovely 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Calculating so close to 80%. Let's see what happens. Does the car vibrate? Does it make weird noises? What's it doing? Looks like I'm at 56 kilowatts. I think that's the rate at which I'm charging, if I'm not totally wrong. I still see the miles per hour fluctuating just a little bit. Plus 33 kilowatt hours. I'm assuming that's how much energy it put into the um, car. And now it says charging complete. Just for fun. Oh. I just put my foot on the brake and the thing told me unable to drive. What happens if I try to even put it in drive? Oh, it won't even let me. This thing's smart. That gas station that I drove away from those years ago should have had the same feature. All right, so I'm gonna take my foot off the brake. I'm gonna get out of the car. I'm gonna disconnect my phone, it's charging. Open the door. Make sure I don't hit the lady next to me. And looks like I've got the all green. It's not blinking. I guess I'm gonna pull it out. Blue, do I pull? What do I do? How do I get this thing out? Green must mean something. What do I do to get this thing out? I'm gonna have to ask somebody. Do I just press? All right, there it goes, oh. You gotta be smarter than the charge port. And you gotta be smarter than the charge cable. And this thing is really heavy. And you gotta stick it in there, I guess, like that. And that's how you do it. That's my first uh, charge experience. I gotta tell you, I'm not a professional. And it's probably gonna take a little more practice for me to figure this out, but I think I did good. Uh, all right, uh, have a great day and I'm gonna go for a little drive. Bye.